So you're thinking about running a marathon, but you're unsure about whether or not you can do it. Stay tuned. This video is going to help you make that life-changing decision to run your first marathon. What's up everybody, I'm Alex, AKA Alex the Vagabond. In this video, I'll be sharing with you my tips for preparing for your first marathon. This is gonna be a fun video. I'm gonna share what I learned from running my first marathon this year and hopefully inspire some of you out there to run your first marathon as well. If you're new here, please make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it. And without further ado, let's get into the tips. Let's get you running your first marathon. In January, we always set some New Year's resolutions and goals. And one of the goals that I set for myself was to run a marathon. So I signed myself up in probably in like November of 2018 and the marathon was at the end of March in 2019. Running a marathon was gonna be the biggest physical challenge I'd ever undertaken. I was excited, scared, and I didn't know how to do it. So I took a note from the pages of history. The story goes that in 490 BC, ancient Greece was being invaded by the vastly superior Persian Empire. The city-state of Athens rose troops to meet the Persians where the fleet landed at Marathon, while sending Pheidippides, an Athenian professional running courier, to Sparta to request warriors. He ran the 240 kilometers, or 150 miles, to Sparta and back in two days. He then ran the 40 kilometers, 25 miles, to the battlefield at Marathon and back to Athens to announce the Greek victory over Persia in the Battle of Marathon, exhaustedly arriving to the Athenian leaders and saying, Chariete Nikomen, hail, we are the winners. He then collapsed and died. I desperately wanted to avoid that last bit. The marathon race came about in the first modern Olympic Games in 1896 in Athens. In a nod to Pheidippides, the competitors ran from Marathon to Athens. The event quickly caught on, becoming a fixture at the Olympic Games, and major cities started staging their own annual events. The distance eventually became fixed at 26 miles, 385 yards, or 42.195 kilometers, the approximate distance from Marathon to Athens. So before we get started with the practical tips, I'm just gonna give reasons why running a marathon is an incredible thing to do at least once in your life. First off, it's gonna teach you discipline. And in this modern world that we live in, discipline is something that it's kind of lacking. I think that we could all do with more discipline in our lives, holding ourselves more accountable for what we do and what we don't do. Running a marathon is gonna teach you discipline quickly. It's gonna challenge your perceptions. A lot of us don't think that we are capable of running a marathon, but when you sign up for that race and you begin to train, you're gonna learn that you're so much stronger than you think you are and you can do anything you set your mind to. We all have that voice inside of our head that says quit, but uh, when you run a marathon, you have to learn to ignore that voice and another voice comes in, a more powerful, supportive voice that tells you, you can do it. The completion of a marathon, it's gonna make the negative voice a lot quieter and the positive voice a lot more loud. Another benefit of training for a marathon is that it can be done anywhere at any time. All you need is a pair of running shoes and the willpower to step out the door and start running. You'll also be smarter. Running increases brain activity. It makes you more receptive. It also boosts your mood. Aerobic exercise releases dopamine and serotonin, which make you feel better. It also decreases depression and anxiety symptoms and it benefits your overall mood. So running is a natural antidepressant. Hi. So tip number one, start training 
as early as you can. Give yourself as much time as possible to train for the marathon. I gave myself around five months. Don't make it too long. You don't want it a year out because then it's so far away that you won't actually start training. In the lead up to the marathon, I had been running, I had been cycling, doing some high intensity interval training. So I wasn't like fully out of shape, but I also wasn't in the best shape of my life. I was kind of somewhere in between where I feel like probably a lot of us out there can uh, relate to that. There's a lot of information online about scheduling and regimenting your training plan week by week, gradually increasing distance. I live a very spontaneous lifestyle. I travel and I'm a filmmaker. Set routines are difficult for me. With that in mind, I kind of knew that I wouldn't be able to stick to a very, very, very regimented schedule, but I could keep training no matter where I was in the world. And that's the beauty of running a marathon is that all you really need is a pair of shoes and when I ran the LA Marathon, there was actually a person who was running it barefoot, but I would not recommend that. Started training about four months away from my marathon. I started out by doing three runs a week for about five miles each, and then the next week, four runs, and I just kind of gradually built up my resistance. Two of the runs, maybe five or six miles, and then the other two to three runs, seven and a half miles and then one last one would be like 10 miles. I only ever ran a half marathon once in the training. I also realized that around six miles, I really needed food and electrolytes. Now I know that this is not what you know it says in the books or what other people on the internet might say. I'm just telling you what worked for me. My second piece of advice would be to invest in proper running shoes. How many people overlook this? You might have a pair of shoes that you've ran in occasionally for you know a year or so, but like tires on a car, your running shoes do wear down. I bought my shoes at a place called Runner's World. These were the shoes that I ran my marathon in. They're the Brooks GTS 18. I'm slightly flat footed, so I did get custom insoles. You don't want to just go buy brand new shoes right before your marathon. You wanna give yourself and your body enough time to break those shoes in. I highly recommend going to a running store where professionals can kind of help you find the proper pair of shoes for your marathon. And while you're at it, I also highly recommend you get a pair of compression socks. They are knee length socks that fit very tightly against your legs and that constriction actually helps to improve recovery times anywhere between three and five percent. Maybe it's psychosomatic, who knows? It feels good. Get yourself a good pair of running shoes and some compression socks. Prepare yourself to be uncomfortable. Less than 1% of humans around the world will complete a marathon in their lifetime. That's because running 26.2 miles isn't really all that fun. It's gonna be hard, it's gonna hurt, it's gonna require dedication. It's gonna push you to the limits of what you're physically and mentally capable of doing, but you're gonna grow from that. Training for a marathon is gonna put you into a much healthier place. Completing a marathon is going to really change your mentality and your outlook on life. You are capable of doing incredible things. Evaluate and change your diet. Let's be honest, we live in a modern world where the vast majority of the food that we consume isn't all that great for us, or chances are it's actually actively bad for us. Becoming aware of your nutrition is extremely important in the lead up and the training for your marathon. Our bodies are machines. What we put into our bodies is what we're gonna get out of them. Your body needs to be properly fueled. Everybody has different dietary necessities and dietary restrictions. So you're gonna have to take those into account when you're figuring out what you should eat. For me, lots of leafy greens, spinach, kale. Beets, beet juice before you train. It's actually gonna improve your stamina and your endurance. It's one of the amazing things that beets do. You wanna be consuming carbohydrate. You can get carbohydrate from vegetables, 30% protein, 30% fat, 40% carbohydrate. That's a pretty basic way to look at 
proper nutrition. I eliminated a lot of extra carbohydrates that I was getting from like gluten sources. My body doesn't really love gluten, even though my brain absolutely loves gluten. Give me bread, can't have bread, give me bread. Everybody's diets are different. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm just telling you what I did and what worked for me. I replaced them with vegetable carbohydrates. So I was eating lean meats like turkey, and fish and chicken. Think of this as an opportunity to reevaluate your nutrition and improve it. Train hard, rest hard. It's really, really important to remember to rest. Muscle growth happens when you stress and rest. At least one day a week, you need to have a rest day. And those rest days shouldn't be like fully sedentary. You wanna do what's called active recovery, whether that's taking a little walk, like walking your dog, or going to a slow, deep stretch yoga class, like yin yoga. If you don't have a foam roller, or you don't know what this is, then you should definitely get one. I will link this one down in the description. It's my favorite. The foam rolling is essentially a really good way to force the lactic acid out of your muscles and help release a lot of that built up tension that you get when you exercise a lot. My rest routine would be like post run, I'd come home, I'd make a smoothie, I would take a bath with Epsom salts, relax in there for about 45 minutes, come out, dry off, put on my compression socks, put on some comfortable clothes, yoga mat on the floor, stretching for at least a half an hour. And one of the most important aspects of recovery is sleeping eight hours a night minimum. Your sleep is when your body repairs itself. It's crucial. That's gonna be really, really beneficial for the way your body recovers because recovery is just as important as training. All right, it's the night before your first marathon. What are you gonna do? I was a little bit nervous because I was not fully prepared for the marathon. I went to bed at 8 p.m. and then I woke up at 4 a.m. the day of the marathon. I ate some eggs and I left my house at five. I arrived at six, the race started at seven and I was ready to go. Just under the 405 freeway. Oh, hi. Oh, oh hi. What's up? Oh, there's Wonder Woman. It's always good running with superheroes. Just crossed the 405, officially on the west side. We're 20, 21 miles in. Haven't stopped. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, those are my tips for running your first marathon. I really hope that this video inspires you to get out, sign up for a marathon, and challenge yourself because it is just so beneficial. The feeling of crossing that finish line is gonna be one of the best feelings in your life. So if you have any of your own marathon training tips, please put them down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Please give it a big thumbs up, share it with your friends, the people you wanna run a marathon with maybe, and hit that subscribe button with notifications enabled so you don't miss out on any future videos. As I always say, train harder, fail smarter, and never give up. Peace.